So this week we're going to cover t-tests, so we'll do an independent t-test and a repaired samples t-test, and then we'll also do an independent one-way ANOVA. So now then we're getting into designs where we're comparing groups. So far we've looked at associations between variables. The t-test will allow us to compare two groups and then ANOVAs are much more powerful in that we can compare first of all more than two groups but then also add independent variables to compare more than one independent variable within an ANOVA. But we'll start off with independent t-tests. What we'll do with these exercises is to put up a research scenario, run through the research scenario, and then specify what design this is. So for t-tests, this is fairly straightforward, but for ANOVAs, it's good practice to get into the habit of looking at a research scenario and then working out what type of test you need to do on that data. So the research scenario we've got here then is uh, Dr. S. Lumber wanted to investigate the effects of sleep deprivation on exam performance. So she took a group of 30 students, randomly allocated them to two conditions. In the first condition, students were encouraged to get a good night's sleep the night before an exam. In the second condition, students were forced to stay up all night and revise. And it was hypothesized that forcing students to stay awake all night would impair their exam performance the next day. What we've got here then is an independent samples design because we've got two groups. One independent variable with two conditions, the sleep group and the no sleep group. And one dependent variable, which was their performance on the exam. And this is an independent samples t-test then. This is what we want to use on this. We go into SPSS then. I've created a data file here with this data. So you can see I've got the group as one variable. We're in variable view at the moment. So group is the first variable that just defines which group the participants in. I've labeled these with values one for sleep and two for no sleep. And the second variable represents exam score, so the dependent variable. What you want to do to run a t-test, what you'd first want to do is check for uh, normal distribution. If you're running any statistical test on your own data, then start off by checking for normality. For these practicals, unless otherwise indicated, you can assume that the data is normally distributed. So for this one, we'll just go ahead and run the t-test. Uh, if you go to analyze, compare means, and then down to independent samples t-test, it will bring up this box. And for a t-test, there are very few options to select. Everything's, everything that you need is selected by default. So all you need to do is put your group variable or independent variable into this box. And then what you need to do in a t-test is click on this box, define groups. And this is just defining the groups based on the codes you've used in the data set. So here we said group one was sleep and group two was no sleep. So you just need to tell SPSS that you've used the codes one and two. And if you used obviously different codes, zero and one, then you just swap those with the numbers you've used. Click on continue and then put the dependent variable exam score into the test variables box. You can actually add as many variables in this box as you like. And what it'll do is it'll just conduct a separate t-test on each of the dependent variables, but the independent variable will remain the same. So it's not conducting, say, a, a massive test on all of these variables. It's just conducting separate t-tests for each variable you add. Right, we'll click on OK now, and then bring up the output. Then if we get the output up, what we can look at first of all is just the mean scores between the groups. In this table here, so the sleep condition scored an average exam score of 66.2. And the no sleep group scored an average of 58.73. So it looks like the direction of the results is in accordance with the hypothesis 
in that the sleep group was scoring higher on the exam than the no sleep group. What we can do next is go to the next table. First of all, check the Levine's test for equality of variances. This is the test to determine whether we've got equal variances across the groups or whether the variances are unequal. And what you're looking for here is a non-significant p-value. If it's not significant, which in this case it is, so it's 0.97, so not significant, which basically means there's no statistically significant difference in the variances between the two groups. If this was significant, then what that means is the variances between the two groups are different and they're statistically significantly different. At the moment, we have, we've got equal variances assumed, so we can just use this line here to report the test statistics. If you did have a significant Levine's test, what you'd need to do is just report, you can still run the t-test, but you just need to report the data from this row here, which makes adjustments to the test statistics based on the fact that the variances are unequal. So what it actually does is it alters the degrees of freedom. Here, you'll see they're exactly the same, but that's because we had virtually identical variances. If the variances are different, these degrees of freedom will be reduced. And this can have an effect on the T statistic, if you've got unequal samples within each group. And it can have an effect on the P value that you get out of it as well. So it's really important to use the correct statistics based on whether you've got equal or unequal variances. For as it's fine, so we'll use this row, as I said, and to report the t-test, you just need to pick out the relevant bits in this table. The most important are the t-statistic, which is here, the degrees of freedom, which are 28. So then you'll report the degrees of freedom as, as is standard convention, you report the degrees of freedom in brackets, then the T statistic, and then the P value. And then the, what you want to do is there's one other thing to report, which is a measure of effect size. And it's becoming increasingly widespread to use and report effect sizes. So it's good to get into the habit of reporting these. The effect size we're going to use is Cohen's D. And we'll use a slightly simplified form of Cohen's D. And this is the one that Andy Field uses in his book as well, but it just illustrates what Cohen's D is actually doing here. In terms of uh, calculation of Cohen's D, if you've got unequal standard deviations between the groups, or if you've got no kind of obvious control group, then there are methods to calculate Cohen's D which take into account the pooled standard deviation. So they'll take into account the standard deviations from both groups. We'll keep things simple, but just to say there are several resources online where you can calculate Cohen's D from the test statistics. But Cohen's D is essentially a measure of effect size that in standard deviation units, we'll go on to that in a minute. But for this example, we've got Cohen's D, we take the mean score of the sleep group, and then we minus the mean score from the no sleep group calculate that value and then divide that by the standard deviation for the control group, which we're going to consider the sleep group. So the mean scores were 66.2 for the sleep group, 58.73 for the no sleep group, which gives us 7.47. We can divide 7.12, which was the standard deviation for the sleep group, and this leaves us with a Cohen's D of 1.05, or just above 1. So now I'll just go into what that value actually represents. As I said, it's measured in a standard deviation unit, or standard deviation units. And we can think of this, if you relate back to when we were covering, or when you were covering Z scores, a Z score is also a measure which is measured in standard deviation units. So if you have a normal distribution like this, you can calculate the mean score, and we'll just set the mean score at zero. And what we can do is we know that if we draw a line here, corresponding to this point in the normal distribution, 
we know that this is one standard deviation away from the mean. The difference represents exactly one standard deviation. So if you had, say, just a, a particular value or an individual score, which is a Z score of one, then that individual is one standard deviation above the mean. And the same principle can be applied to if you were comparing groups rather than just looking at an individual score. So if you had two distributions here and you wanted to work out whether these distributions were different or whether the groups differed, then what we can see is the mean score for the second group also corresponds to exactly one standard deviation unit away from the mean score of the first group. So the difference between the two groups the mean score of the two groups represents one standard deviation. And this is what's represented by Cohen's D. If your Cohen's D was exactly one, it would mean that the group differences are a ma of magnitude of one standard deviation. If it was 0.5, it means the group differences may represent half a standard deviation. And you can just interpret Cohen's D in that way. Then if you wanted to report this t-test, write it up, you could write something like this. There was a significant effect of sleep deprivation on exam score. Report the test statistics, including your effect size, and then report the mean scores, but also interpret the direction of the effect. So participants who were able to have a full night of sleep gain higher exam scores than participants who were sleep deprived. And as well as reporting the Cohen's D effect size, also report whether that represents a small, medium or large effect. So our example here, that represents a large effect size. In the repeated measures design next, I'll just run through how to interpret this Cohen's D, some general guidelines for how to interpret a small, medium or large effect size.